in the dime stores and the stations. People talk of situations. Bob Dylan, for sure. Love Not a Zero. That was my first real hit record. It made 54 in Billboard, uh, which means it was 54 all over the nation if you ever sit out to what, you know, with the sales and all. Uh, great song, great production with uh, Lou Marenstein. I took that and went to London in 70, and I got to work uh, the Royal Albert Hall with Marion Makiba, who was such a gracious lady, and she heard me singing in the dressing room and offered something I'd never seen ever happen before then or after then, and I said, if I ever become a big star, I'm going to offer her. She wanted to go out and do two songs with her band, and then she wanted to be the one to introduce me. And by her doing so, her crowd listened to every single note I sang because she said, listen to this man sing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's how we quoted it in the book. Yeah. By the way, this is number 10. Isn't yes. It? 10 of our installments. Uh, trying to go through my career chronological. Uh, it's my book, Blindsided. You can go look at it at www.turleyrichards.com. And... Um, you can buy the book either as a book or as an ebook. I've got all kinds of download albums there. So, you know, it's a little story. And this is my sales pitch, right? <laughs> yeah. So, if you get a jazz back in the 80s, that's how we talk <laughs> with the DJs. So, uh, but the, the full albums and also single songs. Yeah, single songs website, if you yeah. want to buy them, just like you do on uh, iTunes. iTunes and stuff. Anyway, I was off to London and uh, it was quite a fun time in London. I, uh, Got to do the Albert Hall, and later on in the year, I went back again, and I did the Plumpton Festival. And you started talking like a Londoner while you were there, right? Yeah, I would say things like, that's appalling, and I'd never say that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, did the Albert, ha Albert Hall, and I did the, what was that called, the Pop of the Tops TV show. The record was doing well over there. <clears throat> that's why they had me back in, in August, and I did the Plumpton Festival. And the people on that show was pretty impressive. It was Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Cat Stevens, the Incredible String Band, and had a bunch of names that I didn't know that you know probably went on to be big in, over there. But I got to meet Ozzy. Mm -hmm. uh, they took me over and said, uh, of course, you know, Ozzy wasn't that big yet. But, you know, uh, Black Sabbath yeah. was big, but they weren't that big yet. Said, Ozzy, this is Turley Richards is with Warner Brothers. I said, well, nice meeting you too, and walked away, and I asked him, I said, what are you saying? He said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> so Ozzy's always been that way. It's not just recent time. Uh, great band, uh, Richie Blackmore knocked my socks off with this band with Deep Purple, mm -hmm. which was your first favorite my band. My favorite band when, when I was kid, 14, yeah. yep, after I graduated from Kiss, yeah. But I got to do <laughs> some shows with, with, uh, <laughs> with, um, uh, Klaus Vorman, the bass player that was very good friends of uh, Paul McCartney and the Beatles. and uh, He was a great, gracious guy, a wonderful player. And we did a couple of shows at the Lyceum and with two groups named Taste and Hard Meat. How do you like that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> God. And I just found some uh, two or three newspaper articles from... Those Mel Melody Baker, yeah, yeah, yeah they were downstairs. That, yeah, they were yeah. talking about the show. Pretty like complimentary. I, I had one good thing, and I can't find it. Was said about me and Melody Maker uh, around that time. Is Elton John quote that um, Turley Richards is the United States' best kept secret, and that was a great. You know, we're still looking for it in their archives. Mm -hmm. They want to charge an arm and a leg to find it. And I hope it's there. I mean, I was told that's what it was. So. But, you know, I've, I've, I've brushed close with a lot of big stars. I uh, uh, enjoyed doing tours. Richie Havens and I did probably 17, 18 shows. I did uh, 17 with Moody Blues and was supposed to do more, and that didn't come about. Did shows with Joni Mitchell, uh, Vanilla Fudge, <laughs> Paul Butterfield Perfect. Blues Band. Jethro Tall, um, and of course, comedians Richard Pryor, George Carlin, oh, my favorite jazz singer, Sarah Vaughn, um, uh, Shelley Berman, uh, Professor, um, 
can't think of his, uh, Professor Irwin Corey. All of those shows were just a blast to do because I was with some extremely talented people. Still in Mara, I enjoyed mm -hmm. doing shows with them. So I had a really nice productive career, but on the edge things were going wrong. And I uh, mentioned earlier about the Steve, about the David Frost. Um, I'll, I'll kind of just put it in one way. A humongous offer was made to my manager and he turned it down without telling me. And you'll read about it in more depth in, with, uh, in the book, if you buy the book. <laughs> Um, so came back from there, uh, from, you know, overseas and enjoyed both of the trips there. And it was time to do my second, uh, album. However, you know, Warner Brothers really blew it. Um, my album didn't come out till October of 70 and the hit record was finished up in April. See, we got really kicked really hard in April too. A lot of us in the business with the uh, Kent State uh, incident that, oh, yeah. that really shot a lot of uh, concert things we had. And, um, you know, I just still got to do shows with uh, Neil Diamond and the Fifth Dimension, not Fifth, uh, First Edition. I did do the Fifth Dimension mm -hmm. as well. But, and Zager and uh, Zager and Evans or something that had the end of year. I don't know that uh, one. I don't remember that. It was, it was a couple of really bad situations. <laughs> but uh, I got back and um, started working on the second Mourners album. We recorded in Los Angeles in early 71. I had James Taylor's band playing for me, except for a keyboard. I had uh, Paul Harris, but it had Leland Scalar, who's still a good friend of mine, Russ Kunkel, and Danny Kuchamar, and me on acoustic and the piano we recorded at the uh, record plant. And we did some really nice stuff on that album. She's got it right here somewhere. Yeah, it's right here, Expressions. Expressions. This album is my favorite of all of, I mean, I love Thurfew, but this is still, I, the songs on this album, I think are just as relevant today as they were mm. when they were written. There's a K Carol King song on there called Child of Mine that my daughter told all her friends that I wrote it about her. <laughs> and, it, and I recorded it nine years before she was born. <laughs> so she was embarrassed about that. And, and if she sees this video, she's going to kick me. So, but anyway, I, I finished that up and then more hell starts happening. Uh, Warner Brothers wants to make me, are you ready for this? The sexy blind man. Because the other blind people were not sexy and good looking. And singers. I was. Huh? The other singers. Yeah, the other singers. Well, they're blind singers. Yeah. You know, uh, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Jose Feliciano. They wanted to, to make me this sexual, sexy. And their timing couldn't have been worse. I uh, mean, because it... I was 99% gone vision. And, yeah. you know, and I was not handling stuff. I didn't want to be presented as a blind singer. And they were right. They, I mean, they were only doing their job, but I got angry and walked out and ended up getting my release from Warner Brothers along with managers. I quit everybody. I said, I've had it. i got to deal with this blindness. And so right you cut all ties and walked away. Yep. Yeah, and right before we ended up moving to Louisville, well, actually, I went down to Louisville to uh, – think about, you know, uh, just getting away, and I sung in a couple places, and when I came back, my wife had me to go to a party, my first wife, to go to a party across the street with a bunch of holy rollers. So we're going to have to do that in the next segment, probably, because yeah. we've got less than a minute. How much time left? Uh, less than a minute. Okay, well, we'll get that that, in that, the That's a big story. We'll get that in the segment 11, mm -hmm. but right now, uh, enjoy the sh uh, all the segments, I hope, and I hope you're getting a better understanding oops, oops. Uh, of who I am uh, or who I was. I just knocked my first <laughs> wife over. <laughs> Look out, baby. <laughs> you may be I'm next. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, God, Lord, it's been